Hi everyone, welcome back. Today I'm going to be doing a review of 172 Hours on the Moon, and it's by Johan Harstad. And this is a YA sci-fi horror book, and it is awesome. <laughs> I just finished this. It's a very quick read and very, very captivating. The book starts out um, with Dr. Blank, and that's how he's referred to because his name is blanked out on all the pages. He's in NASA, and he's discussing with several other people the possibility of a return to the moon. Um, there is this element, and it's called Tantalum 73, which is apparently used in all the modern current technology. And it's very important, but it's the only place you can find it is on the moon. And um, they want to return there for that particular reason, and also for some other reasons, which are sort of slowly revealed through the book. Apparently... Um, between the years 1974 and 1976, a secret base was built up there entitled Darla 2. And after 76, um, the kind of the space program funding ran out and it was left abandoned. No one had ever actually set foot within the base. It was sort of remotely built, robotically built. And they do want to go back up there and check on it. And of course, mine for this particular element. And they decide to try and create uh, more interest in the space program to generate funding and everything. And they think, well, this is a perfect time. It's coming up on the 50th anniversary of the original lunar landing with Armstrong and Aldred in 69. They can use that as an excuse to return. Also to check on this base. They'll reveal this, the existence of this base. And, of course, for the purposes of mining for this element. And to kind of also build more funding and more interest, they decide that they're going to send teenagers up there as well because that'll kind of create interest in generations to come to keep that funding rolling in. And they decide to have this world lottery to draw names from. And that's how the, the book kind of opens up. From there, we meet um, three of our main characters. And the um, first one's Mia. She's from Norway. And she's a singer, musician, in a punk band. And that's her main goal, is her music and everything. But her parents see this as a real great opportunity, and they secretly sign her up for this opportunity of a lifetime, as they later described to her. She does not want anything to do with it until her bandmates kind of say, hey, this would be awesome if you won and you went to the moon. Think about the publicity this would be for our band. It'd be awesome. Uh, we'd be famous, you know, and it would open up all these doors for us. So she decides, well, yeah, maybe, maybe that would be a good idea after all. And then we also meet Midori. She's from Japan and feels really restrained in this life that she's living on this small little island. She wants to see the world go out and explore, you know, break away from her parents and everything. And she sees this as her opportunity to kind of get away. And then we have Antoine. Uh, he's from France and has just recently broken up with his girlfriend and basically wants to get as far away from her as possible. How much further can you get than the moon, right? So um, the book is a little slow in the beginning as we're kind of getting to know these characters. Each one of them kind of encounters an odd circumstance that will come into play later on in the book, and I won't go into detail about that. But I thought that was really neatly done the way the author did that. Um, so we eventually they go through a lot of training to get ready for this mission. Um, they will, of course, be accompanying you know, seasoned astronauts. Um, there was like four other astronauts, um, so the crew. So they go through all sorts of training and everything, and eventually the mission, the mission uh, takes off. And things don't go very smoothly after the landing. As you can imagine, there's going to be elements that go wrong, that they have to try and repair, and things like that. But there's a lot of other weird things that happen, and that's where the creep factor kind of comes in. That's where the horror aspect comes in, and it's very lightly done. It's not, you know, jump cut kind of things to make you jump out like that. It's more subtle. Um, for instance, the two people will walk into a hatch, and then they'll turn around. If, you know, they're looking for something, they'll turn around, and they're like, but we left that door open. Why is it closed now? And you're thinking, well, in space, there's no wind to blow a door shut. So who closed the door? There's nobody else there, we think, you know. So the, the right way, you're, you're just like, that doesn't make sense. And then there's like a footprint where there shouldn't be and all sorts of little weird things like that that get more and more creepy as they go. And again, I don't want to, you know, give any spoilers away, but I just love the way the author inserted these things and the revelations as you find out what's going on are just awesome and amazing and I loved every minute of it right up to the end. Um, part of the ending I kind of guessed at, part of it I did not, but it was it was amazingly done. It's very, you just find yourself flying through this book. Um, the text is pretty good size um, and like I said, it, there's lots of 
uh, images throughout the book of the moon, the lunar landing. Um, let's see if I can find some of the good ones here. Well, that just shows the Sea of Tranquility where the original uh, lunar landing was. And that's where this base is built. Um, I think it's back here. They even show a picture of Darla too. No, I might not be able to find it. No, that's just another image on the moon. But there's a picture of the base and stuff too here. Um, I even love the, the book itself, the cover, the dust jacket. It shows the desolate lunar surface. And then there's this gigantic eye, which I thought was really cool. And you can almost see there's an image over here of a person standing. And then there's this one lone image way back here. And that's kind of relevant, too, to this story. Uh, even the, the taglines on the book, um, who knows what's really out there. And on the back, it's the opportunity of a lifetime if they make it back alive. I love that it's not busy with any other blurbs or anything. It's just impactful and creepy, and I loved it, and I definitely recommend picking it up. I give this five out of five stars. Hope you guys try it out. If any of you have read it, let me know what you think about it down below, and I will see you again next time. Bye-bye.